Hi, who's this? Mr. Uh, Stephen McCabe. All right, thank you, Mr. McCabe. All right, we're going to go. Uh, we're on, uh, Gene. From Ms. Del Grosso, excuse me. Yes, Judge, we're on. We're streaming. All right, thank you, Mr. McCabe. Uh, we're here in the case of State versus uh, McCabe. Uh, we have uh, counsel on the phone. May I please have counsel's appearance? <clears throat> George Russo on behalf of the state. Good morning again, Your Honor, Elizabeth Martin, on behalf of Mr. McCabe, he's present via video conferencing. All right, this is accusation 2004-258. Mr. McCabe, we're going to have you sworn in, even though there's no Bible there, do you swear or affirm that any testimony you will give will be the truth in this matter and nothing but the truth? Yes, Your Honor. All right, could you state your full name for us? Stephen Allen McCabe. All right, thank you, Mr. McCabe. Now, uh, I have a waiver of indictment and trial by jury. Before I get to that, are you currently under the influence of any types of medications or substances which could affect your judgment or your ability to understand what's taking place? No, Your Honor, but can, can you just give me one second so I can close this door? Yes, of course. I'm sorry. No, uh, that's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, are you under no, the uh, I'm not on any substances. Okay. Uh, and uh, do you have any uh, uh, physical or mental impairments that could affect your judgment or your ability to understand what's taking place? No. All right. How old are you, sir? 37. Your highest level of education? High school diploma. You understand that you have the right uh, to uh, have this matter presented to the grand jury, which is comprised of 23 people who would hear a presentation of the evidence by the state in order to determine if there's probable cause to believe that you committed the crimes alleged. If at least 12 people on the grand jury believe that the states met their burden to establish probable cause, then a true bill or an indictment would be handed up and lodged against you. Do you understand that? Yes. By waiving indictment, you're giving up your right to have this matter presented to the grand jury, and instead, you're agreeing to the lodging of an accusation. The accusation would then become the charging document upon which the state could later uh, pursue this case against you. Do you understand that? Yes. Is anyone forcing, threatening you, or coercing you to waive indictment and trial by jury? No. Are you doing it freely and voluntarily? Yes. Have you had enough time to talk to Ms. Martin about it? Yes. And have you reviewed and gone over the accusation with her? Yes, Your Honor. And uh, um, again, uh, you, you're doing this freely and intelligently and voluntarily without force or coercion, correct? Yes. And you're satisfied with Ms. Martin's services? Yes. All right, then I do find that you have freely and voluntarily without force or coercion based upon your sworn testimony, a waived indictment and trial to jur by jury. Technically, a not guilty plea will be entered uh, on your behalf. However, I do have a plea form in front of me. So we're going to go over that plea form together. And let me just say that, um, well, let me ask you this first. You've had, you've had the opportunity to review this plea form with Ms. Martin? Yes, Your Honor. You, you went over all the questions? Yes, she asked me them uh, when we spoke last week. All right, did you understand them all? Yes. All right, and are all the answers on the plea form yours after consultation with Ms. Martin? Yes. And are all the answers truthful and accurate? Yes. All right, now do you understand, even though this plea form is not signed, after I go through these questions with you, you're going to be bound by this plea agreement. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so if at any time you have any questions, you need to ask them, okay? Yes. All right, it says on the plea agreement that you're going to be pleading guilty to count one of the accusation and count six of the accusation, which is theft uh, in violation of 2C colon 20-3A. They're both as amended. Uh, they're fourth degree crimes. Do you understand that? Yes. The maximum sentence is 18 months New Jersey State Prison on each with a $10,000 fine on each and a $50 VCCO on each. Do you understand that? Yes. That means the maximum sentence is three years with a $20,000 fine and a $100 VCCO. You understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Now, did you commit the offenses for which you're pleading guilty? 
Yes. And you understand that before I can accept your guilty pleas in a few minutes, you'll have to tell me exactly what you did that makes you guilty. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Did you have the opportunity to review the charges with Ms. Martin? Yes. Do you understand the charges? Yes. Have you had the opportunity to review the discovery and the evidence with Ms. Martin? Yes. Did you ever get a chance to take a look at it yourself? Um, no, not not personally. I never had one personally. Like, all right. Um, but, uh, we but went, you, Ms. Martin went over it with me. All right. Do you do you need any additional time to look at it yourself? No, Your Honor. All right, you you understand that uh, I'd give you that opportunity if you wanted to, but you're you're telling me you want to go forward today. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Did you have the opportunity to discuss with Martin potential pretrial motions and defenses that could be raised on your behalf? Yes. And did you discuss with her potential outcomes in the event that you decided you wanted to go to trial? Yes. Did you discuss the consequences of pleading guilty here today, pursuant to the plea form? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you're giving up certain rights? And amongst those rights are the right to a jury trial where the state would have to prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You're giving up the right to remain silent. You're giving up the right to confront witnesses against you. Do you understand all of that? Yes. Do you understand that by pleading guilty, you will have a criminal record? Yes. You will have to pay a $50 VCCO for each offense along with a $75 safe neighborhood fee for each conviction. Do you understand that? Yes. In addition, you'll have to pay a $30 law enforcement fee. In addition, you'll have to um, give a DNA sample, which can be used by law enforcement, and you would have to uh, pay the costs for that. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. Uh, let me continue on. Uh, are you currently on parole or probation? Yes, you are. Do you understand that by pleading guilty here today, that may result in a violation of your probation and you could be sentenced to the maximum term under that uh, conviction? Yes. All right. Um, now, according to the plea agreement, the court, the state is going to be seeking to dismiss counts one, two, and three of S-2019-275-146-1 counts two, three, four, and five of the accusation and counts one and two of W-2024-1435. Is that your understanding? Yes. And the state is going to be recommending that you be sentenced to 18 months in New Jersey State Prison concurrent on each count and concurrent on your parole violation. Is that your understanding? Yes, Your Honor. In addition, the state's going to be uh, providing proof of restitution two weeks prior to sentencing. Is that your understanding? Um, now that's restitution. Now they, they had received everything back, so there won't be any restitution or? Uh, well, I don't know if they have or they haven't. However, uh, when the st if the state comes up with a financial number, you'll certainly have the right to challenge it. Okay. All right, you understand that? Yes. All right. The court would also have to make a finding that you can pay it, 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 it before it's ordered. So uh, that's to to come uh, at the time of sentencing. Do you understand that? Okay. All right. Yeah. And uh, to our prosecutor, how come we don't have a, a number right now? Uh, Your Honor, I, I'm still confirming with victims. There were um, three separate victims in this case, but I should have uh, an answer soon. All right. We'll make a determination at the time of sentencing if it's uh, going to be ordered or not. All right, then, uh, sir, Mr. McCabe, do you understand that the state will be uh, speaking at the time of sentencing, but they're not seeking any type of extended term of confinement or a period of parole and eligibility? Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a United States citizen? Yes. Have any other promises uh, uh, been made to you or representations been made to you to get you to plead guilty other than what we've discussed here so far? Um, n no, there hasn't been any, any other promises. Just um, I think uh, me and Ms. Martin, we spoke about um, just the, the jail credit up until yes. sentencing. All right, yes, certainly you'll be entitled to jail credit. Uh, in addition, um, it's been requested by Ms. Martin that you be sentenced on April 24th because you're going to be sentenced on the parole violation on April 17th 
and that you've been detained since January 8th uh, on the parole violation in this case. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, Janu yes. January 8th is what Ms. Martin wrote on the plea form or the, somebody wrote on the plea form. Is that your I was, understanding? I wrote that, Judge. Okay. So, yes, uh, uh, the, uh, Ms. Martin will be asking for jail credit, I would assume, uh, from that date. Is that correct? That's correct, yes, Judge. I'm trying to minimize his gap time credit, which is why I'm trying to get the sentence to Friday after he's sentenced on the parole violation. Yeah, the court has no objection uh -huh. to doing it as long as the pre as long as the the pre-sentence report is completed. Okay, thank you. Uh, all right, so let me ask you a few more questions, sir. Uh, do you understand the court does not have to accept uh, the recommendation of the state? The court could impose a greater sentence. But if I were to do that, anything you say here today uh, uh, cannot be used against you and you could take back your plea. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, you can take a factual basis, uh, Ms. Martin. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Mr. McCabe, I'm going to start with count one and the accusation. On December 15th of 2019, were you in Roxbury Township? Yes. You would agree with me that's in Morris County, correct? Yes. And on that date, you took movable property that did not belong to you. Is that correct? Yes. Specifically a black purse? Yes. And you would agree with me that the value of the items that were taken was over $200, but less than $500? Yes. And you had no permission from the owner of that purse to take her property. Is that correct? Yes. And you returned the purse to the police, is that correct? Yes. Judge, I think that's sufficient for count one, unless right. the state has further questions. Mr. Russo? Uh, Mr. McCabe, you weren't planning on returning the purse to the person you took it from, is that correct? I'm sorry, what was that? You weren't planning on returning the purse to the person you took it from, is that correct? No. State satisfied, Your Honor. You can move on to the next camp. All right, thank you. All right, Mr. McCabe, on the same date, you were also in Roxbury Township, is that correct? Yes. And again, you would agree with me that's in Morris County, correct? Yes. And on that date, you committed another theft, is that correct? Yes. And you would agree with me that the value of the items that you took was over $200 but less than $500, is that correct? Yes. And that was another purse, is that correct? Uh, yes, it was a bag, yes. And you had no permission from the owner to take that bag, is that correct? No. And eventually you did return oh, that wait, property wait, wait, to the wait, police, wait, the, the, the question, excuse me, the question was, is that correct? And he said no. So why don't you go back to that last one? Yeah, Hi, no Mr. McCabe. Permission. When you took the black bag from the owner, you did not intend to give that back to her. Is that correct? No. All right, so that's that's not consistent. Is that correct? You're asking, is that correct? So are you agreeing with the statement? Why don't you rephrase it, Ms. Morton? Okay. Mr. McCabe, when you took the property, um, the black bag from the owner, you were not going to give that bag back to her? No. So you were going to keep that bag for your own personal use? Yes, I took it to keep it, yes. You only turned it over to the police after you got arrested, correct? Yes. And you had no permission from the owner to take the property, correct? No. Uh, again, he he's, answer, uh, he's answering in the negative when you're saying correct. So the answer, if the way you're saying it would be yes, but he's saying no, so you need to go back over that. But Mr. McCabe, the individual that owned that black bag, she did not give you permission to take the bag. Is that correct? Is that accurate? She did not give me permission to take the bag. No. Judge, I think I took the bag. Say it again, Mr. McCabe. I took the bag um, on my own. She did not give me permission. And I was, I took the bag to keep the bag for myself. Thank you. Right, yes. Mr. Russo, anything? Data is satisfied, Your Honor. 
Okay, Mr. McCabe, um, again, in regard to the, the plea and all aspects of the case, uh, again, have you had enough time to talk to Ms. Martin? Yes, Your Honor. And have all your questions been answered? Um, yes, I just, um, I have uh, Ms. Martin, We I spoke to her, I, I have my parole hearing on the 17th. Um, I was going to... I was going to drop on, we have uh, kiosks here to speak to parole, and I was going to put in a slip and ask parole to waive my hearing and ask them to violate me now, so that way, when we have the sentencing on the 24th, I'm definitely um, already uh, violated, because I didn't want there to be, uh, you know, just in case when I come to get sentenced on the 24th, it, just in case parole didn't violate me yet, I wasn't sure if that would make a difference or not. Mr. McKay, so, parole has already filed a violation. Okay, so if I, if, when I go downstairs, I can go on the kiosk and I'm, should I, I will let them know, should I, I was just going to say, um, I was going to waive my hearing so that they could violate me now. Let me so just, that, like, Mr. McCabe, I'm, I'm going to ask that you have this conversation because you're, you're seeking legal advice. We're, we're live. It's being broadcast. This should be a conversation. Yes, that I think, Mr. McCabe, that you and, and I can have that conversation off the record. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. So, again, are you, you, right. you, you I know you wanted to ask Ms. Ms. Martin other questions about and your I will proposal. set up another um, phone conversation with Mr. McCabe. All right, Mr. McCabe, do you want to go fo continue to go forward with this plea at this time? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you're satisfied with the advice you've received uh, to date with um, from Ms. Martin? Yes. All right, and uh, do you want to, any additional time before we go forward with the plea? Or are you ready to go forward? I'm ready to go forward. All right. Um, do you understand that if I accept your guilty plea and then you come back to court before your sentence, and you claim um, that you want to withdraw your guilty plea, for example, because you didn't commit the crime or somebody forced you or you're not satisfied with Ms. Martin's services, I can tell you now that I would probably have difficulty believing you because you've told me something different under oath here today. Do you understand all that? Yes, Your Honor. And if you wait until after sentence is imposed and then try to change your plea, it may be even more, more difficult because you'd have to show that it would be manifestly unjust for the court to continue with the plea in the sentence. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Now, again, you haven't signed a plea form in this matter, but we've gone through all these questions, and you're going to be bound by uh, this discussion that we've had. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, then the court does find that you have uh, freely and voluntarily, without any force or coercion, uh, entered into this guilty plea with, uh, after consultation with a competent counsel with whom you're satisfied. I make this finding based upon your sworn testimony that you did, in fact, commit the offenses uh, set forth in the accusation uh, as amended in counts one and in count six. You've been alert, you've been oriented, you answered all questions immediately, you answered in a strong tone. So I do find uh, uh, that you're uh, credible for these purposes here today. I also find you're not under the influence of any substances and you do not have any type of physical or mental impairments that could affect your judgment or your ability to understand these proceedings. I find specifically that you've understood everything that has occurred here today. So your guilty plea will be accepted. Sentencing uh, per the plea form will take place uh, on uh, the 24th of um, April this month, you're going to be ca you're going to be contacted by a probation officer so a pre-sentence report can be prepared. Um, I'm I'm certainly hopeful that you can coordinate with them so uh, uh, that report can be prepared and I can be fully informed at the time of sentencing. I know Ms. Christensen is on the phone. Um, will um, we'll be able to get in touch with Mr. McCabe? Somebody will be able to do that. Yes, Judge. I believe so. The same way that we've done court today by video. Oh, very good. All right, then, Mr. McCabe, we'll see you back on April 24th. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. And Judge, before we hang up, Mr. McCabe, I will schedule another phone conference with you before the 17th, and we can discuss what to do with the role, okay? Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care now. All right. Bye-bye. Take, right, bye -bye. take care. You too. All right, so now we're going to move on. I believe we have, what do we have, the Barnes case?
Yeah, they're still on it. All right, we, that, yep, that can be hung up, and we'll go on to uh, the Lindsay Barnes case. Do you have her telephone number, um, Ms. Uh, Del Grosso? Yes, I do, Judge. All right, thank you. And is it uh, who is counsel for Ms. Barnes? That's me, Judge Caroline Cobo, on behalf of Ms. Barnes. All right, let's wait till she gets on. Thanks. And then, um, Ms. Del Grosso, you said we had several other matters? Uh, Judge, it's just one more, and that's the matter involving Mr. Uh, Mr. Shellhorn, who's, who uh, uh, yes. I yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And that'll be, you know, everyone else can go, and we'll get Mr. Shellhorn and counsel on the uh, counsel will be appearing by phone, and then that will be it after this. Great. Week. All right. Jean, can you hear me? I can hear you, uh, Ms. Kelbel. Oh, hi, Judge. Sorry, I, I just tried to call Ms. Barnes several times, um, and I'm getting voicemail. Uh, so I left her a voicemail message and sent her a text, and I'm just waiting to hear back at this point. Um, uh, all right. Uh, well, let's we can give her a few more minutes. If she otherwise, we'll have to put it off. Okay, I understand. Yeah, but let's wait till Ms. Del Grosso gets back on. She went to check on something. Oh, okay. All right, but you can keep trying if you can. All right. All right. Uh, I'm back, so you want me to try her? I can try her again now. Uh, Ms. Kelbel tried a couple of times and kept kept getting voicemail. We can try again. Otherwise, we can push it to next week or another day this week. I think I'm, on, think I'm on tomorrow, aren't I? Uh, you have nothing as far as I know right now, but we can put oh. something on for you. I mean, if I'm available, I'm happy to do it tomorrow. In the afternoon. I can come on at what, 1.30? Yes. Why don't we try to get her one last time? And then, uh, okay. please, uh, and then please, Ms. Kelbel, try to get her throughout the day to make sure if we can't, that she's available tomorrow. I will judge. Thank you for your understanding. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's showing busy. All right. Then uh, why don't we uh, carry that matter till 1.30 tomorrow afternoon? And uh, Ms. Del Grosso, you can arrange for me to get on? Yes, Judge. Who's the uh, prosecutor on the case? It's my case, Your Honor. George. All, right. All right. Can you be available at 1.30 tomorrow? Absolutely. Okay, then we can do that. And uh, are we still streaming, Ms. Del Grosso? Yes, we are. Um, I'm going to I'm going to tell Mr. Shellhorn to call back in. That would be great. And who's his uh, defense? Who's the defense attorney on that case? The defense attorney is um, Miss Farrow, and she's provided a number for us. All right. By the way, I've just been told by my law clerk that I have two pleas tomorrow: Ward Law and McHenry. So, if you could coordinate with Miss Bellucci, it'd be appreciated. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Judge, I will see you tomorrow then. Thank you very All much. All right. Thanks, thank thank you for your work. Thanks thank for you your work. Stay safe. Thank Absolutely. you as well, Mr. Russo. One thirty right. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Bye-bye now. All right. So we're waiting for Mr. Uh, Shellhorn. And I'm sorry, who did you say the defense attorney was? Nancy Farrow. Okay. Um, and a, a number was provided. So while we wait for Mr. Shellhorn, I can see if I can get her on the phone. All right. That'd be great. What if your email now? Ms. Farrow? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Finally. Uh, yeah. Hi, Ms. Hi, Ms. Farrow. Uh, Farrow. It's uh, Judge Ironson. We're just waiting for Mr. Shellhorn. Okay, very good. I'm glad this worked. I was thinking it, it wasn't working at all because I didn't get a call, but I'm glad. Uh, just uh, it was just, finally I'll, able to get together. They have done a great job in uh, putting this together, so uh, yeah. it's wow. all good. Technic technical aspects are mind-bending, really, uh, how yep. they're able to do it. Right. Yes, they, yes, yes, they've done a great job, the, uh, the IT team. So Mr. Shellhorn was on with us earlier, so he should be back any moment. Oh, okay, great.
Uh, Ms. Del Grosso, we have two views of you, a side view and a front view. Yes, that's because I had to sign back in to get the Court Smart working again through another device. I got I got two computers and two phones working here. That's what it takes to make this happen. <laughs> well, we appreciate Hello. it. All right, let's see if we can get rid of some of that. Yes, that? One, one's down, yes. Yeah, one is more than enough. Um, I do not see Mr. Shellhorn coming in, so I, but I do have his cell phone number, so if you'll excuse me for just a moment, I'll call him I'd appreciate on that. It. Thank you. Sure. Okay, he's logging in now. He should be with us momentarily. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. There's Mr. Shellhorn. All right. Thank you. All right. So which case are we here on, uh, Mr. Shellhorn? Your Honor, this is a uh, scheduling conference for the PCR of State versus Kashif Parvez. Um, just looking at the, I believe the promise gavel number is 11001929, Your Honor. All right. Was there an indictment number as well? I should yes. Have I believe the indictment was 12... 060665I. All right. And on behalf of Mr. Parvez, uh, counsel, may I have your appearance, please? Yes, sir. Nancy Farrow for the defendant. All right. Thank you. And you're waiving his appearance here today for schedule for just this scheduling mm -hmm. conference? Yes, Your Honor, just for this. Mm -hmm. All right. So a PCR has been filed in the case, and uh, we need to set a briefing schedule. So uh, let's ask counsel for Mr. Parvez, when, uh, how long do you think you need to file your briefs? Um, could I have 45 days? Um, 45 days you're asking for? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let me just see. Today is, let me just pull out my uh, calendar, if I can do that for a moment, and see where we stand. So today is uh, April 7th, so that okay. would take to uh, May 7th, another 15 days after that. That would take us to uh, May 22nd. The 2nd, right. All right, so your brief will be due on May mm -hmm. 22nd. And then, uh, right. Mr. Shelburne, how long will you need to file your brief? Judge, I believe based on what I, I know at this point, I would need anywhere between 30 and 45 days, Your Honor. Well, since we're giving uh, the defense 45 days, I suspect we should give uh, the state the 45 days as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that takes us to, what did we say, the 15th? was What, what date did I say on the defense? 22nd? May, May 22nd. Mine right, is so that, 19th, so that would take us two weeks later. So that takes us, I believe, all the way till July. Uh, and that would be, let's say, July 10th. Yes, Your Honor. And we can get this scheduled uh, over the summer. I don't think the court needs 45 days, uh, but we'll get it in right before my law clerk leaves. <laughs> All right. And why don't we schedule it for, I'm sure we're uh, open um, for now. Why don't we put it on for mm -hmm. uh, August 11th? Uh, maybe August. let's a little bit earlier. Let's do it for August 4th. Okay. August 4th at, um, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning. We'll do it first thing. Um, Mr. Shellhorn, can you submit a scheduling order? Um, yes, Judge. And what time did you say? We'll do it at 9 o'clock in the morning. And uh, uh, may, I, may I inquire as to uh, the number of issues being, being alleged in the case or being argued in the case? Uh, right now, he uh, filed his uh, petition pro se, so we're just, I, I couldn't meet with him personally, of course, so I'm going to, uh, I may narrow it, it may be two. Okay, uh, not a I problem, know. and you know, yeah, what, two whatever, two. You, whatever you deem appropriate is uh, certainly acceptable. Uh, I just was wondering, uh, but mm -hmm. that, that's yeah, fine, whatever. Whatever arguments you want to make, certainly uh, set them forth. And uh, we will uh, hear the case on uh, August 4th at 9 o'clock in the morning. Okay, good. very good. 
Judge, I'll circulate that scheduling order to uh, your staff and, and Ms. Farrow either later today or tomorrow. All right. Thank you for getting back on. Everybody stay safe and uh, I appreciate your time. You as well, Judge. Thank you. you. All right. Thank, thank you. Kim. Thank you. All right, Ms. Del Grosso, I believe that concludes today's matters. Is that correct? That is correct, Judge. All right. So unless I hear otherwise, we'll expect to come back on at 1.30 tomorrow afternoon? Yes, Judge. All right, yep. We have uh, apparently three pleas to put through tomorrow afternoon. Okay, sure. I'll get with the staff and we'll, we'll um, work that out and send out the invites. Uh, to you, Ms. Christensen, Ms. Reyes, Ms. Pellucci. Excellent job. Thank you so much. Do I have any, am I missing anywhere? Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Shatsoff, I see you're on as well. So thank you. We don't thank want you, to forget Judge. you. We, uh, I think that's everybody. If I missed somebody, I'm sorry, but everybody did a great job. You're all good. All right. All right. Thank you. Have, have a great day. Bye-bye now.